My name is Sarah Reed, and this is my handmade home in southern New Hampshire. Hey guys, welcome to my house, come on in. I live here with my husband, Matthew, and our amazing cat, George. <laughs> My dad's parents, they were looking for a little retreat. They were in their 40s. They befriended the landowner and bought it for several hundred dollars in 1963. So they found a kit company in Maine um, who they built all the timber and it came on a flatbed truck down, the, down this little dirt road and spent the summer building it, just the three of them. When we took over it, it had wood rafters and kind of a yellowish insulated panels in between the rafters and it was pretty dark. So it was really important to me to brighten it up. And I know some people hate when we paint wood, but I don't and so I wanted it white, so I did that. The living room is where we spend most of our time. This stove is so iconic for the 60s, which is when this place was built. It really makes the room. Like everything in here is like family artifacts. These are crates that literally my mom and uncle traveled across the country with. This is my mom's parents' sofa. It was this orange wool that I had recovered. I lovingly call this house Frankenstein or Frankie because it is so cobbled together. It is, each room has its own personality. As a designer, you know, I like cohesiveness and I like the whole, the whole house to tell a story. And I have wondered, like, is it weird to go from this pine room into this white? You're not gonna unify it with paint. Like, it's a weird space or unique space. We have a lot of books. We have a joke about how he wants to die by being crushed by books, and I want to die by being killed by my houseplants. So it's a houseplant book race to see who will get us first. This kitchen is only eight by eight feet, but it's incredibly efficient. Two of us can be in here working. My grandparents had it set up very differently, and I knew it wasn't going to work for us. We kept their old sink, and I have so many memories of my grandmother at this sink. I happened to have this Hoosier. It's exactly the size of the sink, so we took it apart, plopped it in there, and then this fit perfectly under the skylight. It has lots of weird little spaces, so I found products that fit. I designed this whole thing very specifically for this use. It flows really well for us. This is the dining room. My grandparents added it to the A-frame in 1980. There was no electricity here, so everything you see was built by hand. There was no power tools here. So my grandfather like hand sanded and hand joined and did all the work. My grandparents would be here in the summers and I would see them when I was visiting my dad. It was that way until the 90s when my grandfather died and my grandmother got too old to be here and it just sat here. Everybody agreed that I could take it on, so I did. We got the A-frame in 2011 and my grandmother had left all of her stuff here and it had been sitting since the 90s. It was heart-wrenching to see my grandfather's slipper, literally slippers by the door. Their toothbrushes were still in the cup by the sink. The table that I ate so many meals at, um, just all the artifacts of their life. Um, but I also knew that I really wanted it to be mine and that we would just carry on the legacy of the A-frame in, in my own way. I um, brought my dad's old door from his original house over and we made a table out of that. So it's still a really meaningful table, it's just not the old table that I grew up with. At some point in the 90s, they had me and all of my cousins and aunts and uncles engrave our names. I don't even know if you can see it. I'm like way down here. I put myself in the corner. <laughs> I had forgotten that we had etched our names into that glass. I'm gonna cry. I actually rediscovered it just a couple years ago because um, you don't really see it. You know, handwriting is so 
immediately personal and brings you to that person. So to see my whole family's handwriting, how could I get rid of that, you know? <laughs> My grandfather built this. It's the same as it ever was. We, we built this in to be more functional in the kitchen and because we love a good bar. As a designer, I it sounds really woo-woo, and I'm not a woo-woo person. I'm really not a new age person, but I really like to walk into a space and ask it, what do you want to be? What do you need? It was really important for me to keep some of my grandparents and to make it my own, but also to make it what it wanted to be. One of the things that I love about the A-frame is it affords all these very strange nooks and crannies to kind of put stuff that are unusual. This is the most controversial thing I've ever done on Instagram. I know, it's breaking the spines, I know. Uh, we've read most of them or we're not going to read them. They're okay, I love them, so don't at me. So this room was added in 2016. We were married in the summer of 2015 across the street at my parents' house and my dad built us a temporary barn structure for the party. Everything you see other than the pine cladding was part of that structure. These are the original floorboards. This is where a friend of ours passed out at the reception and someone else outlined him. After the wedding, my dad took down the barn and made this room. My only instructions were, I want it to be as big as possible, and I want these twin bed guest beds to use the angle of the A-frame. One of the things that I love about this room is the height of this wall and seeing the exterior of the A-frame. I really wanted to use the slope of the exterior of the A-frame in some way, and I realized that beds kind of jutting out would be amazing, and we happened to have this ladder lying about. For our wedding, we had our friends sign the building itself rather than a guest book, knowing that we were gonna do this. So we cut them all up and made these beds, and now we can never move. I don't really know where my body stops and, and this house begins, like it is, so one in the same to me. I feel more encouraged and emboldened to ask them to dig a little deeper when we're doing that process, the design process, because I think it's really good for your heart and your mind. Aesthetically, uh, beauty is really, really important to me. I think it's important to the human psyche. A lot of people don't live with a lot of physical beauty in their spaces, and, and I think they just don't, they don't, it's not their, Thing and they don't know how to do it and they think it costs a lot of money. And so I'm always trying to use what they have, to repurpose what they have, to get them into thrift stores. I'm not interested in spending a lot of money. I've always been interested in getting the, um, the insides of a person externalized in their environment. So when I'm working with a client, I talk to them a lot about family history, cultural history. I'm always looking for their more personal items to use. I think one of the ways that I am different than other designers is I will take on a client for a couple hour job. I don't, I don't need to take on a huge house and fill it with all the things that are new from big box stores. I love just pointing out to someone like, oh, you want this room to feel this way? What if you took your living room rug and brought it in here? And then they do that and they're like, literally our lives have changed. It's all the small little ways that you can affect your space that I, I hope I, I illuminate those for my clients. This space was actually kind of a nothing space when we moved in full time. So I asked my dad to build this, because I've always wanted a library. Who doesn't want a library? But we clearly don't have just an extra room to make into a library. So we have a little nook, a little library nook. When you're designing new, a new build, you wouldn't end up with so many weird little nooks and crannies. I mean, I'm a big history buff. I've always loved history. And so to feel history in a space, you just, you can't design that and you, you can't replicate it. You can't make it happen. It has to happen over time. And, um, and I think as humans, we can just sense that. And this chair specifically is so, so special to me. I respond to objects. I don't really respond to art. I don't really respond to movies. I. There's, 
I just, it's objects and the arrangement of objects that make me just gasp out loud. So when I saw this chair, it was like seeing your crush or something, you know? I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. It's gonna be $500. I don't have that kind of money. And I asked the guy who was selling it, how much do you want for the chair? And he said, $35. And, and I said, okay, yes, please, thank you, yep. So this is my immediate family. When I was growing up, these two walls were covered in portraits of all the grandchildren. So I knew I wanted to do something like that here. And then this is for the people we have lost. This is Bob and I love him. He married us and he died last year. And this was taken in this space. So it's really just meaningful to see him every day. My grandparents were Really very interesting people, really hard people. Um, and they never imagined this A-frame beyond themselves. And so um, I don't know, I don't know what they would think. I, I'm sure they would be happy that it's still in the family. In 2011, when the family was contemplating selling it, um, the idea that strangers or even family friends would take it on, I think emotionally felt like um, strangers would be moving into my grandparents' literal bodies. Their bodies and beings and humanness was so connected to this land, to this property, that I couldn't really separate them. I have such a deep connection to my family history. I know a lot of people don't. I guess my family has always had a culture of honoring that and thinking about it and talking about it. It would have been really heartbreaking. This is our dressing room. It was my grandparents' bedroom. A-frames really have their challenges when it comes to storage and angles. I found these really shallow dressers and decided to make a whole wall of them. They came as raw pine. I just took some paint that I had and I thought I would try to do a plaid, but it turns out that plaid is incredibly hard to draw and paint. So I got some wallpaper in kind of the same color scheme. It just kind of came out of me. These rugs are really important to me. My husband's aunt was an artist, and when she passed, we were allowed to take one thing from her house. She was a real kindred spirit to me. So when I walk on this, I think of her. When we moved here, I was finally like reunited with all my stuff. So I went through all of my archives. I have saved everything my whole life. And I just started pinning things up from my life that meant something to me. And eventually it just took on this whole collage, just the biggest collage I've ever made. This room, probably above all the rooms, is where I feel like I'm inside of myself. This a-frame sits on seven acres and it is surrounded by literally hundreds of acres of Audubon land. We are very isolated and insulated, except there was this little 60s cabin. So with that, we have this little guest house. So this is the guest house. It's all about this view. It's all about relaxing, reading, writing, puzzles. Whatever is chill and relax, you can do here. <laughs> this is an antique stove that I love that we had restored, but it's only got two burners because, and there's no oven. Like, chill, make a sandwich, it's cool. <laughs> it was another family's cabin who I knew. Um, I knew them growing up and the kids of that couple um, were so generous and gracious throughout the process of us buying it and renovating it. They've been nothing but supportive and they've actually visited twice. And I can't say how much it means to have their approval because we really changed it a lot. They were nice enough to offer it to us before putting it on the market because that would have really changed our relationship to the land. Thanks for coming by. I think the things that you love are 
are absolutely timeless. If you really love them, they're timeless. Hi, my name is Judy Aldridge, and this is my handmade home in Fort Worth, Texas. My connection to art, actually it's more of a recent thing. I started adding to my art collection and just completely fell in love with collecting art. I just love to see the way that other people express themselves. And I was primarily collecting vintage art, but then I thought, okay, well these artists have kind of come and gone. And then I thought, you know, I really can support new and upcoming artists, knowing how hard it is to break into that world. It really started with Instagram and constantly changing my house around. My Instagram handle is at Atlantis Home and I just love that whole design community. You can meet someone who is just as far out as you are, who are people that are much crazier than, than I am with their designs, so I love that. I moved into this house 15 years ago. It looked really, really bad. It was terrible. This horrible carpet that I'm not even sure what color it was originally because it had been on the ground for so long. It was just filth. And lots of chintzy or, or little dainty wallpapers. And it was just, it was kind of a mess. And lots of country and Western railing, like a country and Western bar. But I liked the bones of it. That kind of, kind of had that modern vibe that I liked. My sister and I, we um, acid washed the floors because I didn't want to have put wood floors down. So those have evolved a bit, but these, these, this is like the foundation. The concrete floors give it kind of a lofty feel. I've always felt like this is a house that's very casual. And if you try to add things that are very fancy, it just, it just doesn't work. It, it would look pretentious or out of place. I think it should be a very simple place. I would describe my style, it, that it's really hard because I think the word eclectic is just overused. So I'm gonna say that it's evolving, that it's collected, and hopefully it's cool. <laughs> right now we're in my living room. Some of my favorite things in this space, one of them is this basket that I found at the thrift store, which was a great find. I know a lot of people remember this from my Instagram. It was a big deal, everyone was freaking out when I found it, and so his name is Stuart. That's one of my favorite things. I love my Rob Eckhart chairs. The way that I started adding color back into my life was the purchase of the hot pink chairs. People always call them red, and they're not, they're hot pink. When you pull up the top rooms on Instagram or whatever, there's a lot of beige, there's a lot of gray, there's a lot of white. When I bought these into my house, it was just like kind of life-changing. I just thought this is, wow, this is really fun. I want more of this. So one of my favorite pieces is this horse. And unfortunately, we can't decipher the name of the artist, but it was actually like an edition of 19. It makes you really wonder where the other 18 of these <laughs> exist. So this pineapple is from Mexico. It's from the Michoacan region. They're really known for this style of, I, I, I believe it's terracotta. This is one of the larger ones and I don't recommend importing one because it was a real challenge to get it here. I have a lot of books because I think people talk about meditation. For me, books, that is, that's my meditation. And I reference design constantly, constantly. I'm always like, oh, what about that? Or I remember that image. I wanna go back and see that image because there was something I liked about it. Then I also have a lot of vintage books. And some of the 80s design is so inspiring to me, or old Santa Fe design. Now we are in my dining room. I do like to cook, so I wanted to have a nice place where we could sit down and, and have a nice dinner. But also I wanted it to be a multitasking, multifunctional space where I could have my reference books, put my computer, sit down, and get some work done too. Of note, the Saarinen table. It's the only new piece of furniture in my house um, I gave in and uh, to my husband and we got the Saarinen table and, and I do love it. It's really nice and it's a little bit smaller so it kind of fits the space a little bit better. So this is my kitchen. For me, I will always have an all white kitchen. I want a place that's bright and cheerful. I wanted a, a farm table as opposed to a kitchen island because I just wanted it to feel more like your grandma's kitchen. For me, open shelving works. These are the bowls that I make my dog's dog food in this. 
So these are definitely the things that I use. So this is my entryway. I change it around a lot. Sometimes I'll have a cool long table here, some great lighting, sculpture. But right now, it is definitely just reflecting the whole art gallery feeling from the living room with just a lot of great pieces of art and the warm platinum chair. Let's go upstairs. You know, I'm just constantly inspired by vintage pieces. It's not just about saving money, but it's about making your home look like your own space instead of like, oh, I know you just got that at so-and-so. It makes it look collected instead of just purchased. Right now we're upstairs in my loft and this is my favorite room in the house. It's where I come to have a cup of tea. Some of my favorite things are these busts, which are vintage Horchow, and I found them in a dusty old shop in Arizona and drove my husband crazy because I had to hand carry them back on the plane. And he was just like, no, can we just please leave them? And I was like, no, these have to come with us. So they kind of uh, dictated the rest of our trip. I made these paintings from paper mache. Paper mache the frames and then did the little flat canvases, but the frames are supposed to be kind of a funny take on faux bois. The thing that I love about paper mache is the freedom. You have to just make whatever the heck you want. And it's cheap and it's like recycling and it's not too precious. When you're dealing with flour, water, and newspaper, it's like, I can just mess this up and no one's gonna care. This is for my grandson that's on the way and I'm so excited. So this is Henry's nursery. My design approach to this room was just, I'm not gonna buy anything for this nursery other than the crib, literally everything else. I have the rug, the curtains, all the art. This painting on the wall, my daughter Jane did, and it's like a little baby dinosaur, so I thought it was just perfect to have in Henry's nursery. The thing that I love most about design, I guess, is just the freedom to make your space look the way that you want it to look. So design makes your life better. Hi, I'm Matish, and this is my handmade home outside of Washington, DC. So we were, you know, in the search for a larger home as our family was growing. We really didn't have anything particular in mind except for just a little more space. And we actually saw quite a few homes, a lot of them, you know, all different shapes and sizes. And really when we walked in here um, and we saw kind of just the amount of light that the house was getting, and it was really from the high ceilings, I think that just sold us. When I walked in, it was really bare white walls, builder grade paint, um, never had been painted. I just needed to bring in color and needed to bring in personality. And being our first home, I already had so many ideas of what I wanted to do. All design is kind of a work in progress, so I think over the first few years, really kind of started coming together room by room. You know, my cultural background is a huge inspiration for my home and what I want to share. My family comes from the Gujarat state in India. Um, my parents immigrated over in the 70s, and so a large part of my um, early childhood, I had spent summers going back to India to visit the grandparents and our extended family there, and just was absolutely drawn into um, the culture and the art that I would see around me. And a lot of it uh, was folk art, which was done um, you know, by the people, for the people, and would be on display everywhere. And I wanted to showcase it in a different context. One of the first areas that I knew we could you know, really bring life to it was our sunroom. It had a lot of light, especially in the afternoon. My favorite part is this uh, swing feature. Swings are a real traditional feature in a lot of Indian homes. And it was something that I grew up with um, on my trips back, swinging with grandparents. And we sourced a vendor in India that actually made these swings with the hardware and was able to ship to the States. And so I kind of jumped on that not knowing how we're actually gonna get it into the ceiling, but I knew that we'd figure it out somehow once we got it over. And I definitely wanted to make sure it had kind of the uh, traditional uh, brass chains, which you know are a little more ornate than kind of your typical chains. It's been one of our favorite features of the home now. I just love that it kind of connects to my childhood with the grandparents, you know, on the swing. And I'm just happy to be able to create that feeling for our kids. Having these plants back here kind of just adds to the ambiance. You feel like you could be outdoors. We did put the grass cloth wallpaper 
and I think it works really well in this room. It adds some texture and uh, again, just that natural element that uh, I think really brings it all together. I do love color in little pieces. You know, this was originally just a natural cane, so I did go ahead and paint it green. These are all antiques from, from India. It's a, a milk container and a food storage containers. And, you know, my uh, grandmother had held on to some of these things. So every trip I would take, I would actually go and, you know, take things from, from them. Uh, and, you know, my grandmother would be like, what are you going to do with this? This is, you know, meaningless for us here, <laughs> you know. And, but I knew that it just meant so much and I just loved the craftsmanship and just the stories that it would tell. This painting's really special because um, it's done in the Bichuai art style, which is uh, a few, you know, centuries old, um, in, especially in Rajasthan. But um, I wanted it to um, kind of feel contemporary. So one of the reasons I love our sunroom is it's right off our kitchen where we spend most of our mornings and evenings. We started off with kind of light oak cabinets, so we did end up uh, repainting them just to kind of make them fresh again. Tying in the green from the sunroom, it's actually the same shade and it's, it was leftover paint from the cabinet. <laughs> Another favorite uh, space of ours is the family room. Again, we get a lot of light in the afternoon and I think it's everyone's favorite spot, especially in large groups and getting together. So I definitely wanted to um, add color into it as well as personality. And so a lot of that you know, comes from the collectibles that I've collected over the years, things that have been passed down to me and really kind of ties into my heritage. So coming over here, I wanted to um, create these wall pieces. These are actually uh, inspired by uh, floor designs that are done in front of the home in uh, India every day using a rice flour paste because I wanted to take that art which normally gets washed away every day um, and really bring it up to the walls so that it's a more permanent feature. I like to bring in color but not overdo it and so this accent chair was perfect. Um, I love that shade of orange. It again feels uh, rooted and rustic. I really have kind of two influences that came together and one is really kind of the mid-century modern and then the other is kind of the traditional folk Indian art. You know my parents immigrated from India to the U.S. in the uh, 70s and you know they were so eager to kind of furnish their home in like the style of that era because they wanted it to feel modern and they were kind of moving away from their traditional roots, but at the same time, you know, my mother had brought back um, artifacts and things she had made, and so our walls would be plastered with kind of art from India, but the furniture and everything was, you know, completely to that era. And so along with that really came the color palette. My sense of color is that, I, you know, I love it, but at the same time, I, I wanted to make sure I did it in a way that wasn't too overstimulating. And so I just like, um, you know, starting off kind of with the clean slate, but then bringing it in, you know, with artwork and accessories, uh, you know, cushions, some, some furniture. You know, the colors always, you know, make me happy. It's just something that um, I'm drawn to, brightens my mood, but then also kind of being surrounded by, you know, art that I've, you know, created makes it so personal. I love when, you know, we have people over and I can tell stories about the, you know, what inspired me to create certain pieces and then um, where I've collected certain things from. I just love sharing about it. And, and that's how I actually ended up doing that online. Over the years, people would come over when they would see kind of the work that was put into the house. They always felt like, uh, more people needed to see this or I would always get told, you know, why aren't you blogging or, you know, putting this somewhere or doing this for others. And so when the opportunity came, um, I uh, sat down and started posting kind of images and just some things that were really important to me in the home. And the thing that surprised me the most was just how much it resonated with um, other people online. It was just a sense of community for people, you know, coming together that also appreciated the kind of art that um, I was collecting and that I was curating and creating. Folk art around the world, it's kind of a dying art and I just love, 
you know, bringing it to life and bringing it to the present. You know, it comes from, you know, centuries of uh, tradition, and I just love bringing it to the present and being able to share it with people that um, may just not know enough about it. And, and so that's kind of the best part. So for our dining space, um, this was the first time we were ever going to have kind of a, a large dining area. So we started off with the, you know a big table. I'm most proud of this gallery wall, which is a collection of the artwork I've collected over the years. A lot of it is folk art from India, along with uh, pieces that I've made inspired by that folk art. You know, we have these pieces that are made to look like paintings that you would find on, um, you know, mud homes um, in India. This is embroidery that comes from Gujarat, where my family's from, and this was actually something that was embroidered by uh, my great grandmother. You know, here is what's considered kind of our formal living space, but just ends up being a extra hangout. One of the things I do like to do is kind of highlight uh, contemporary artists from South Asia and India. And this is a painting done by um, an artist from Mumbai and um, try to also kind of incorporate those pieces. And then I also try to add my own art to it. So here's a piece that I actually painted, um, again, uh, inspired by more contemporary art. So this is our guest bedroom. And as if um, my shirt didn't give it away, I love this color. Uh, that rustic orange um, just feels really uh, earthy and grounded. So one of my favorite features of this room is uh, this uh, mural featuring a uh, tree of life, which is a common uh, motif seen in a lot of folk art in India. Uh, and this is done in the Madhubani style of painting, which comes from Northwest India. The room gets used by our relatives from India as well as you know the in-laws, and so really wanted to feel like home as well for them. So the inspiration for our primary bedroom was really the palaces of uh, Rajasthan. These are uh, inspired by uh, motifs that you would see on woven saris that uh, actually weave in gold and silver strands. And I love putting it on um, kind of jewel tones up here. So this is another one of uh, my favorite corners in the house. Kind of love having this uh, day bed. It kind of reminds me of some of the divans that you would see in India. One of the things that I, I love in this corner is this uh, table that I DIY'd to make it look like uh, bone inlay work, um, but instead it's uh, just paint using stencils. Again, taking inspiration from the palaces, wanted to create um, the illusion of a window pattern. You know, at the same time, wanted to keep it subtle, so it's just a, a light whitewash here. And carried that over to this wall as well, and then uh, a few smaller uh, windows on the side. So this is our primary bathroom and our latest uh, renovation project. And I think what really makes this special is the wallpaper, which is inspired by Pichwai painting, which comes from Rajasthan, India. It just brightens our day when we walk into that bathroom now in the morning. You know, it was a long time coming. We waited years to kind of redo this space and wanted to do it right. And I'm couldn't be happier with how it turned out. So part of the renovation was that we actually had, uh, you know, a built-in jacuzzi, uh, you know, builder grade, and swapping it out for this freestanding tub has been great. Not only did it give us more space, but I think it just um, looks so much better. So this mirror, I actually had uh, a year before we even started this space. Um, it's a hand-carved mirror uh, from India, and I knew it would be perfect for this wall. On this side, uh, my favorite feature has to be these sconces, which um, I find uh, so unique and carry kind of the uh, onion dome shape. When people come over, the first thing they notice is, of course, the sunroom with the swing. And for people, you know, that come from similar background that also spent time in India, you know, it just brings them back instantly to that time of their life. Hey guys, come on in. Say hi, Echo. Hi, my name's Danielle Filosa, and this is my handmade home in New Harbor, Maine. Welcome to the Seawood Sanctuary. Um, this house was built in 1977, built by a wonderful man named Peter. This was before I knew who Peter was, but Peter Knoss 
was living at the time in upstate New York and saw an advertisement on the cover of a newspaper to build a home for himself sustainably in Maine. So he decided to move to Maine and go to the Shelter Institute and where he decided to build this house. From 1979, he started living in it. August of 2020, the house went on the market and it was a pretty big deal for him to do. And it was also a pretty big deal for me to buy. But then once we met, it was almost like a passing of a torch. What I love about this home and I think what other people love about this home is the light and the windows. These like open pan windows are really beautiful. And the fact that you just kind of get to see trees from every angle facing south. It was built south so that the sun comes in and it's solar. It felt like I had been here before in a weird way, but also that it had its own soul to it. It kind of felt like I was just walking into a piece of art. I like to call it the snow globe, especially when it's snowing, because you just kind of feel like you're in this little pocket of stillness. Like, I, I call it the sanctuary for a reason, you know? Let's start in the kitchen. So my kitchen is pretty tiny. It kind of feels like a boathouse kitchen, but what I love about it is the open shelving. I get to really think about the glassware and the bowls that I chose, so everything kind of, this in itself feels like its own piece of art, which is nice. I found these really adorable, like cast iron. I think they're ashtrays. I think the simplicity is great. I think it kind of keeps me to have to be organized, which is really nice. So this makes me think about intentionality a lot. It makes me think creatively in ways that I wouldn't have before because of just how it's laid out. I got this idea from a family friend of just decorating your refrigerator rather than keeping it boring and white. I kind of have just like made my own collage and all, all these things kind of have like a little story to them. I also get a lot of ridicule from my framing my fish bag, but I just think the graphic's great. This is a score being kept in, I think a 1977 basketball game that Peter did while he was watching the Knicks versus LA Lakers, which I think is kind of symbolic and funny because I am from LA and Peter is from New York. So we have this to match. Uh, ourselves, but I'm never gonna take it down. I think it's great and I don't wanna erase it. So this is the living room. This is mostly like entertaining space and there's a lot of really special pieces in this room. One of them is my car prints. I bought these when I was 19 at a flea market. Knowing that I've kind of always consistently had the same taste is something that I am proud of, I guess, in a way. This I love, that's just a needle point. Everyone that ever sits in that couch is always like, what is that? Is that made out of fabric? But then I have this kind of wonderful and bleak life stage of a woman that I got at an antique mall in Wisconsin. I wanted to start collecting like women's suffrage art. What this says is a telling of the times of where women were at. This is kind of the Peter and Danielle combination wall. So this is one of my favorite pieces and this was a gift my mom gave to my dad in the 70s. This was definitely the inspiration for like the nautical theme for this wall. Then I found this like amazing sailor last year at a garage sale for a dollar. That kind of matches perfectly with him. And then these were Peter's, um, these like old fish like that I love. And so was this, and I just clipped some seaweed into it. And so was that. And then these seashells were Peter's as well that he collected from like all over. I think those ones are from Australia. So I found this piece at a vintage store in LA when I was living there again. I was like, I'm gonna get back to Maine. I'm gonna get back to Maine. So I had this map being like, one day I'll be back in Maine and I'll hang it on my wall. And now it's hanging on my wall. There's a lot of like history, I feel like, in just the things that I own. And I love that. My first job I ever had was at an antique shop when I was 14. So there's just been this like interest for things for a very long time. I think there's a lot of beauty and especially in old things, you know, craftsmanship and how things used to be made versus how things are made now. It's very, it's very different. So this is the guest room. I should also say this is my mom's room. She'll get very mad if I don't say that. This is my mother's bedroom. Uh, also the guest bedroom though. 
This room was an addition, but it feels like it wasn't because of how consistent it is and how well he did with matching it to the other side of the house. For me, like the house in itself is a, a piece of art. I think it was really important from the get-go to not really do anything about it, just like keep it how it is. And then for me just to be able to add my things to it. I get to be in this beautiful home that he built. Anytime I do something new, I always like send him over a video or a picture and be like, look what I did. And he's always very excited to see. And I love for him to be involved still. And I think he really enjoys being involved as well. He said to me, he never knew this house could look as beautiful as it now does. And it really was very sweet. Oh, I'm gonna give you a little tear in my eye. <laughs> I appreciate what he has done, and now he appreciates what I have done, and I think that's what makes it feel really special. My dad passed away in 2018, and he wore this ring from the age of 16 until 78 when he passed. So I got it and put it in a little box frame, and so I get to see it every day. You can frame jewelry, you can frame anything. If you can frame a fish bag, you can frame jewelry too. We come to the upstairs. This is the Zen Den, is what I like to call it. I do all my computer work here. So this is like my TV area. I do a lot of crafting up here. And then I found this piece that I love, and this was a deal. I found this for 40 bucks, and it's an old shoe factory toolbox. Trunks are go-to always and forever. I've been, I've been trunking things since I was 18, actually. When it comes to moving things, I would always keep like all my art in a trunk and then move it that way, which is really easy. So yeah, I'm forever grateful for trunks because they look great and you can put stuff in them. I found these two couches on Facebook Marketplace, but they smelled like a 70s nightclub when I got them. So I aired them out and now they smell great, but that was, you know, a risk you take when you buy something on Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> this house, because it was built in the 70s, just really complemented the style that I already liked. I think it's like nice to kind of stay in the time frame of when it was built. Collecting things has always been something that I've just been drawn to, but I think it's for me finding things that make me feel good. Like it's just, it's kind of, that sounds like pretty simple, but it just is that simple. Like I think for me, it's really important to find things that matter because I'm the one that's gonna look at them all the time and I wanna like them and I don't wanna just look at them because I feel like I have to put something somewhere. People get rid of things because they don't really have meaning to them, but if you actually are buying things that you really genuinely like, then you're not gonna wanna get rid of them. Um, Echo agrees, I think. Rugs. I got this rug and the rug in the Zen Den and the rug in the guest room in Morocco. I lugged them on my back for like two two and a half weeks. <laughs> and my friends thought I was a little bit out of my mind, but they made it and they've been here now for like six years. Because everything is open, I thought the best way to keep things safe was to put plants here into this area. So plants are protecting us in most areas. <laughs> two things over here. One is this latch hook that I did myself during the COVID. And I was like, one day this will go on my house wall. Didn't have a house yet. One of my other oldest pieces is this elephant that I got at a garage sale when I was 18. Still have it. The frame's broken a couple times, but it's still it's still moving. I had already been building my aesthetic for so long that it was more about just finally being able to put my stuff somewhere. It feels pretty good. The structure was already beautiful, and then I added my things into it, and I like my things, so it just kind of blended well, and now it looks really nice. It honestly feels like I finally get to rest too because I did so much moving. And now we all get to just like be together in one place and it's really nice and I think we're all really happy about it. And then this is my bedroom. I think one of the coolest features when I first saw the house was the little walkout window. I love that deck. I love seeing that on that deck. And when I saw it, I was like, this, this person knows knows what's what's up. It's really fun when I have parties, like to have friends down there, people up here, people upstairs, people outside, and to like view everyone at their different angles. It's really awesome. Echo, come on, let's go inside. Come on. Upstairs, you can really get to see the timber beams. 
And the idea of why the house only has windows on this side and the reason of why it's slanted is because this is south facing, so the sun and solar come this way to keep the house um, warm. And then there's a bunch of different wood slats open up and then there's a whole ventilation system all around the house and that's to get air flowing. So during summer, it can stay cool which is really helpful. And it's also really beautiful to kind of watch like the sun and to kind of see the intentionality between where the light is coming from. I don't ever want to be a person that designs just to fill spaces. I want to be a person that designs that makes someone feel a certain way. The things that are in this home make me feel a certain way. So even if like I'm doing nothing on a daily basis, if I can just look at my things, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> I have a couple friends actually that have really found a lot of inspiration in this home, which I think makes it even more special. To be able to be in a space that you feel inspired in is honestly like the ultimate goal of what I've always wanted to have as a, as a place to live. So for that to be now happening for others is really special to me. Hi, my name is Talaya Brown and this is our handmade home in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm a nail artist, I own a salon. I started doing nails in college um, as a way to make money. <laughs> it was like my side hustle. I did nails in my dorm room and then I did nails in my apartment. And I'm completely self-taught too, which is something that I'm really, really proud of. I never went to school to do nails. Like everything I learned, I learned on my own, YouTube videos, those kind of things. And so I did an apprenticeship, I got my license, and the rest is history. I am a design enthusiast, but I've never wanted to actually be an interior designer. It's just something I've always been interested in. My mom was super into like decorating our house, changing my room with the season. And I actually didn't really like it back then, but it kind of grew on me as I got older. My husband's grandparents built this house in 1956. I remember even when we were, me and my husband were dating, um, when his grandmother was still alive, we would come here for holidays, spend holidays with her, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and he was their only grandchild. And so, you know, they're a really, really close-knit family. And so me coming into that, it just felt so warm and so, like, inviting. That's why I was so adamant about doing this house justice, because I knew that it was a family jewel. I knew that we would be here forever. Like, this is our forever home. We're not going anywhere else. You know, it makes me emotional because it's like, I never would have thought that this would be my, my path, you know, to home ownership, my path to a financially secure life. Um, like that's what this house has afforded us. First of all, let me say, my husband could have lived in this house exactly how it was when his grandmother lived here. Like he would have been totally fine with it, um, but that wasn't gonna quite work for me. It was, dark <laughs> like water wall carpet very kind of closed off like homes in 1956 were built like every room was a room it was very like a lot of doors all over the place and so initially i already knew that i wanted to like open everything up our kitchen it was completely closed off there was a half wall that came to probably right about here and then there was a bar that came to here and then there was a door that covered this whole area and so we took out the bar and we took out the doors and that completely opened up the kitchen. What used to be the dining room became our pantry. <laughs> I always knew that it made more sense for the dining room to be back there and not here because it's a very like oddly shaped space. And so I was just like, I think that we can just do some shelving and make it our pantry because we decided to take out our upper cabinets and we needed a little bit more food storage space. I love organization, and so I follow like a TikTok accounts, like Instagram accounts, Pinterest accounts that have organization, and I just always love the way that it looks. It just makes me feel like accomplished that it's all like neat and like put together, and so I spend time pouring the rice into the rice bin and the sugar into the sugar bin and then the flour into the flour bin. It's just like a whole kind of relaxing thing for me, and so having open shelving and open pantry is not a hard thing for me to keep up with. My husband doesn't touch the pantry. I mean, he uses the pantry. He grabs, you know, he has his bins that have his snacks in it. I have my bins that have my snacks in it. So that's like a marriage hack. <laughs> it really is. 
So these are my husband's grandparents, Laura and Matthew Wingate. We always just love to have this picture of them just kind of looking over the house <laughs> and uh, watching over us. So. We decided to make this the dining area because it just made more natural sense to us. Anywhere you see board and bed and wood paneling was already there. And so we just basically covered the wood paneling with the board and bed to modernize it a little bit. Because we always liked the look of the two-tone. I never wanted like just a full wall of just drywall and paint. I just feel like it gives it a little bit more character. So this window, <laughs> this is what my husband calls a shotgun window. Um, <laughs> and so there's a, a entryway to our backyard back there. And so I guess, you know, the idea of it is if you see somebody coming in the back wall, you can kind of, you know, be alerted, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but I did, I did consider, I did consider getting rid of this window and my husband said no. And you know, my husband, he doesn't have a whole lot of opinions on a lot of things. So when he does have an opinion, I'm like, okay, cool. All right, you know, I'll, I'll, we can leave that alone. My design style, it's evolved over the years. Initially, when we moved in our house, it was really like colorful, a lot of colorful accessories, all of those things. And I just, over time, I was just like really more drawn to like neutral palettes. And so I kind of made a shift and I started like taking away the colorful things and like replacing them with more like black and white, natural tones and textures. And I've realized that that's what made me feel more comfortable. My favorite design era is mid-century modern. And so just the fact that I ended up living in a house that was built in 1956, I feel it's like kismet. <laughs> like I said, I love mid-century modern style. And so I knew somewhere in our house I wanted a slat wall. And so my brother did the slat wall, I painted it, and it turned out wonderfully. So this is our primary bedroom. This space, I really just wanted to be as calm and as minimal as possible. That's why we went with the really light walls, really light bedding, and of course this kind of cognac color adds like a element of warmth to it with the juju hat and the, and the curtains. Warm and kind of cozy, like a hug. <laughs> it's a juju hat, it's from Cameroon, and they're all handmade. They're actual, this is the actual hat that they use in like, ceremonies. People use them for decor. I have a couple of them throughout the house um, and they just add like a lot of texture and a lot of just like culture as well. So mud cloth is something that I have always just been drawn to but then once I started to learn about the process of it it made me fall in love with it even more like every design is very unique. Every design has its own meaning and so I like to use it throughout our home because it just gives me a feeling of like comfort and a feeling of culture and it's my color. It's black and white. I love, <laughs> I love black and white. So this wall is my favorite thing in this room. It's a gallery wall of like places me and my husband have traveled to. I love waking up and just Seeing this as the first thing that I see, it makes me happy, it makes my husband happy. That was our honeymoon in Montreal and Seattle and one of our first trips to Asheville together. We look so young there, <laughs> like, like little kids. Okay, so this room has been many things since we've lived here. When COVID hit and we couldn't go to the gym anymore, we canceled our Y membership and decided to make this a workout room. So I knew that I wanted a, a focal point kind of accent wall when I decided that I wanted this to be a workout room. And so I just traced out all of the, the shapes and the patterns onto the wall and I took my little paintbrush and I painted in every single one of these shapes. After I did the wall and I posted it on Instagram and everything, one of my clients came in and said that she wanted this design on her nails and I did it. So, and it was really cute. <laughs> okay, so this is what we consider our living room. When my husband Carrick was growing up, this was like the room nobody went in. It was very formal, very like staged and styled. And it was a room that only got used like during holidays. And so when we decided to make this our home, I was very intentional about saying that I'm gonna get the most out of this space. I'm gonna use it because for so many years it didn't get a lot of use. I wake up, I make my tea, I go in there, I sit, I look out the window. Um, honey loves it. She like literally lives on that bench staring out the window like neighborhood patrol. So yeah, I love that room. And it gets the best light in the house. So I love mirrors. They're literally probably in every single room in this house. And just because it's a smaller house, I just think it's a, a good way to kind of reflect light and add another visual element to the room. I knew that I wanted built-ins just because I wanted the space to kind of put all of the things that I love to look at on a regular basis. And I knew that I wanted it to look like it had been here. 
And so my brother kind of brought my vision to life. So we, we were working with a very limited amount of space on this side of the window. And so he was trying to convince me to just keep it this, but I knew that I wanted it to look built in. And so I'm like, I can find a use for some shelving over there. And I was like, our record collection, perfect thing to go there. Oh, she's about to go crazy, sorry. Twice a day, twice a day for five years and she has the same reaction every time. I know, honey. It's the church bell up the street. So embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I got into plans when we moved in this house actually. Once I had my own house, I'm like, we need like something, something extra. And so it started with one and then two and then three and then 10 and then 20. And now I have like this beautiful collection of plants that I love so, so much. Those are like my babies. I'm always happy about the ferns because this is kind of my old to Carrie's grandmother. Every year she would put ferns on the porch. All the rest of these are plants that live in our house in the winter and the fall. <laughs> this is my oldest plant, my snake plant here, which I always measure it by this leaf right here, which is taller than me now. Our porch is like the life of the party, okay? Especially in the spring and summer. Me and my husband sit out here all the time. Most people know us by our porch. Like, oh, you live in the house with the porch. It's like, yeah, that's our house. Um, and you know, like sitting on the porch, you see your neighbors. You see them, you wave to them, you talk to them, hey, how you doing, you catch up. I just love that, that community aspect of it. So this is a historically black neighborhood, right? So a blue collar neighborhood, teachers, police officers, postal service workers, those are the type of people that lived in this neighborhood. So now it's a really highly sought after area. When we realized as a neighborhood that gentrification was slowly creeping upon us, um, we got ahead of it a little bit by becoming a historic district here in Charlotte. We're the first black neighborhood to become a historic district in Charlotte. You know, we had to get the whole community involved in it, but it, it was so important to us because we wanted to really preserve the character of our neighborhood, the, the brick houses and the, you know what I mean? Like this, the community of our neighborhood and we got it done. And now you can't just come in and tear down one of our brick houses and build up some modern house in our neighborhood. And we're really, really proud of the fact that we're preserving the history of our neighborhood. This is my spot right here. And we sit out here for literally hours. <laughs> We take pride in our neighborhood, we take pride in our elders, and we just want to make sure that, you know, we are doing what we need to do to continue the legacy of our neighborhood. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I think about how his grandma would be happy that her grandson decided to make this his home. I think that she would be proud that we were able to do the same thing. If you like this tour, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Handmade for more tours just like this.